Christ is born. Glorify Him. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us rejoice again in the grace of the Holy Spirit, which has united us today. But taking up our cross, we may say, Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Today, again, we celebrate the love and mercy of God. At the same time, we should not take over much comfort in God's mercy because we are the problem still. We ourselves are the biggest problem in our own lives. If we wish to see our greatest problem, our greatest struggle, and our greatest tormentor, we have only to look in the mirror and look at ourselves. Our Holy Father Cyril of Jerusalem and a number of the other fathers tell us that our conscience is really our only judge. The St. Abba Mark of Ephesus tells us we're not going to be, God is not going to sit behind a big desk opening books, judging us. Our conscience will instantly judge us and tell us whether we're to the left or to the right, whether they're among the kid goats or the sheep. And our conscience will be an infallible witness against us or for us, or both, because the conscience will not lie. In that day to come when we're face to face, really face to face with the love and the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comes again, only this time in the fullness of his glory and not in a manger cave. Our conscience will speak an instantly, according to the Holy Fathers, be both our judge and our heaven and our hell. And so we begin with the nativity of Christ, a new holy year, a new sacred year. Unlike the secular New Year's, this is the beginning for us of new hope, a new life. But if we do not make it new hope and new life, if we have no resolve to try to struggle to improve ourselves spiritually during the coming year, it doesn't mean a great deal to us. If we silence our conscience constantly, it doesn't mean a great deal to us. But to pay heed not only to the gospel of expectation and joy, but to pay heed to the warnings that we've been given also. And we shouldn't think of God in some pagan way or with misunderstandings as a wrathful, ruthless, and brutal judge. Because the Holy Fathers have told us the problem really is our conscience. It is us. And it burns within us. And should today when we see the incarnation of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and see His humility and meekness and His love, our conscience should testify to us have I in any way imitated our Lord? Have I in any way striven to try to live that gospel? Have I in any way struggled for the purification of my soul and my heart during this past year? And forget about New Year's resolutions. Let us try to strengthen ourselves on this feast of the Incarnation, this feast of newness of life, to truly struggle against those dark things within us and struggle toward the light. For our Lord Jesus Christ in the creation, we're told, separates light from darkness. And the cross itself is the boundary between light and darkness, between good and evil. The manger cave, the manger in which our Lord Jesus Christ was placed at his birth, it's also kind of a boundary between light and darkness. Because the light of God has entered into the world, but darkness is still there. And darkness is still in the hearts of so many of us, even though we truly believe and we hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also a life of struggle to try to reflect the light of our Lord Jesus Christ knowing full well that our conscience itself 
will be a heavy judge on that day when the secrets of men's hearts are made known and revealed to the light. The church is in this world not to send anyone to heaven and not to send anyone to hell, but to prepare us to come face to face with the everlasting glory of the Son of Righteousness. But remember that the Holy Prophet tells us that in that day the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. The flame will rush forth and burn the stubble in the fields. Our conscience, brothers and sisters, is something we must work with in this world, in this, in this life that we've been given. And our Lord Jesus Christ in his incarnation has actually taught us about struggling with the conscience, with the motivation and the reason why we do things. For the rich young ruler truly kept the law diligently. But his motives perhaps were the law itself and were not the love of his heart. But in the end our Lord Jesus Christ said, sell everything that you have and give to the poor. He wasn't condemning his wealth, but condemning his motives. He was condemning his relationship with his conscience. <laughs> that he filled the law because it was a law. Did he neglect the poor, the widows, and the orphans? Did he use his wealth for anything positive and good? Or was his wealth what controlled his heart? <clears throat> These are the things to ponder on this feast of the nativity of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. And we say we don't have any terror of God. And we say that the mercy and compassion of God is immutable. But the testimony of our conscience is loud and clear and will be even more loud and clear on that day. It's our conscience that we need to fear, brothers and sisters. It's our conscience that we need to reconcile ourselves with, to bring our heart into accord with a good conscience. And this is the great struggle that's set before us. You see how the Magi were transformed because they saw this revelation of divine grace, and they made that long, arduous, and dangerous journey to come to see this newborn king, and left filled with joy and resolve. But Herod the king, born under the law, knowing the law and the prophets, consults the lawyers and the Pharisees and the teachers and the doctors of the nation to find out what the scripture proclaimed and what the scripture taught. And when he heard that the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem, do you see how he closed out his conscience? put a cloak of darkness over his own conscience and his own heart. And because of his lust for power and desire for his power, his wealth, his pomp and his position, did not even halt at killing the innocent to try to destroy anything that threatened his power in this world, in this life. Do you see how we can crush our own conscience and silence it in this life? But believe me, when we depart from this life, in no way can we silence our conscience if it testifies against us. So let us struggle, brothers and sisters, to be always of a good conscience. And this Apostle Paul says of himself that he struggled always to be of a good conscience. And even though he fell many times, as he said, I have two laws warring within me. The one to do those things of the Lord and the other to do those things of this world. Yet I keep under myself at all times struggling that I might take hold of that for which Christ once took hold of me. And we rejoice in the mercy and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. But let us beware that we not rejoice with carelessness and with thoughtlessness and with indifference. <coughs> but that we make this the beginning of another year in which we work and struggle to be of a good conscience, 
a conscience that is in accord with the gospel and to bring our heart into accord with that conscience. For this we're called upon in this life and in this world and not to excuse ourselves and not to pretend that we will not have to answer but we answer to our conscience and our conscience is our judge. Brothers and sisters, during this coming year, let us all resolve that we will struggle to be of a good conscience, a conscience in accord with the Holy Gospel itself, that we might face the great and holy day of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ when he comes, not in the manger cave, but in the fullness of his glory. And his love fills the whole universe. That our conscience not be found in darkness to testify against us, but that our conscience causes us to rejoice in that appearance of those things for which we've hoped. Amen. Amen.